Hi, I'm Dustin Abbott, and I'm here to give you my final verdict on the most recent addition to the Zeiss Otis series, the 100mm f1.4 APO Sonar Lens. APO stands for apochromatic, sonar being the uh, Zeiss optical formula that's part of the design, optical design of this particular lens. Now, of course, Zeiss is well renowned for its fantastic optical performance. It's in also its expensive lenses. Now, the Otis series, in many ways, is kind of the most extreme expression of that, you know, outside of, you know, cinema type lenses, master class lenses that are in a whole nother realm that doesn't really include you and I. But uh, the Otis series is kind of the pinnacle of their development on 35 millimeter full frame DSLR uh, lenses. And in many ways, the Otis series. It's, if you're going to look at it and kind of justify the expense in any way, shape, or form, it's really to look at it as this, that often these lenses are so over-engineered that they give you something akin to medium format performance on a 35 millimeter full frame body, particularly if you're working with a high resolution body. Put simply, they deliver really incredible results that have a degree of perfection that is rarely matched. So if you missed my first look episode, I took a look at the build and the design of this lens. It obviously is a large and bulky lens. Then again, the Sigma 105 millimeter f1.4 art lens is larger and heavier still. And so I guess it's all relative at the end of the day. What is unmistakable, however, is that the Otis series is built just in an incredibly premium way. Everything flows together in a beautiful fashion. Everything is metal and glass. It's beautiful construction. There is a rubber uh, focus ring here that just glides along incredibly. And I will note, I own the Zeiss Milvis 135 millimeter F2 that we did some comparisons with. The focus ring is definitely much smoother on this Otis. It is smooth enough that it's easy to do a one finger adjustment. However, there's just enough damping and friction there that while you can do it with one finger, you can focus with incredible precision. And so it really is kind of focus perfection. Now on that note, this is a manual focus only lens. And so there is no autofocus. And so man good manual focus is important because that's all you're going to be able to do. I did note in that that the focus throw is quite long. And so that might be off-putting for some people, although it could be advantageous for others and that it allows for more precision. But you have somewhere near 300 degrees, 310 degrees of focus throw here. And so just be aware of that. If you're just focusing like this, it will take several you know, partial rotations to get you all the way around. So this representing one limit. So you see it's about four of those type rotations to go from one extreme to the other. Beyond that, it is beautifully built. My one observation criticism is that the Otis series has persisted in not including weather sealing. Now, I understand that initially because when the Otis series started with the 55 millimeter and then not long after the 85 millimeter F1.4, Otis uh, Zeiss lenses, I should say, didn't really offer weather sealing on hardly any of their lenses. However, with the advent of the Milvis series, they started adding weather sealing to all of the Milvis lenses. And so I thought that at least with this lens, they would adapt that in. It's not there. Some have noted that the possibility for that is it allows them to achieve a more silky focus action if you're not dealing with sealing. And others have noted, rightfully so, that uh, lenses like this that have minimal electronics, there is an elect electromagnetic aperture. However, there's not electronics in terms of focus action, so there is less to get fouled up. You know, if you're spending $5,000 on a lens, you can make your own decisions on what kind of conditions you want to expose it to. Uh, but beyond that, it's a beautifully made lens. Now, in our second episode, we took a look at the image quality. And this is really, you know, the only place where someone can really justify such an expensive expenditure. And we noted in that that outside of some uh, fairly heavy vignette wide open, which on that note, um, I was having an internal conversation with one of my Zeiss contacts and they said, you really should consider that to be more of a feature rather than a bug. And while it's true that I do think that the the way that the uh, vignette fall off occurs, it's, it's very linear. And so it does have a very organic feel that in many ways it could be viewed as a positive. My counter argument to that, however, is there's going to be other images where you want to shoot wide open and you have brighter areas where that vignette becomes a negative. And so I think in a lot of portrait settings, the natural vignette 
will allow you to get gorgeous images right out of camera. However, there's going to be other applications where that's less true. And of course, you can solve that by stopping the lens down a, get, a bit. By f2, it's it's very improved. By f2.8, it's, it's largely cleared. And so, I mean, you do have options there. There is a little bit of a pincushion distortion. And outside of that, there basically are no optical defects. It is just fantastic. I mean, it has unparalleled degrees of, of contrast and uh, micro contrast and color saturations. All of those things are just beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Now, what I didn't do in that image quality breakdown is take a look at the performance for portraits as I hadn't had a chance to shoot a portrait session yet. I've done that now. Let's take a quick look at this because I think this is the re place where you can see why this lens is so special. Let's jump in and take a look. Now, it's when you start to shoot portraits that everything makes sense with the Otis 100mm f1.4. And it just has a uniquely special um, rendering of details of face and features and then background and the ability to use it with such amazing clarity. I mean, here, I've I, this is about as challenging as I could come up with. And we're using the kind of burned out area here to create layers, even shooting through a lot of the dead branches to add nuance to the shot. I've got a lot of bare branches in the foreground. You can see that, you know, there's defocused elements of this all through this image and I've shot through them. Of course, using manual focus, uh, particularly in this case, I shot with the Sony a7R Mark III. And so I could take advantage both of the, uh, you know, the image stabilization, but also with manual focus aids. And so you can see you know, I don't have to worry about autofocus grabbing the wrong thing. I focus on exactly what I want. Creates a really unique image, really beautiful. And uh, I mean, here, it's just everything about the images right out of the camera are just really, really special. I mean, everything about it is gorgeous. Here's another here. And so, I mean, you can see, look at the detail in the skin tones on the lips. It's really, really fantastic. So even at f1.4, obviously depth field is very shallow, but it allows you to just create just gorgeous images. It was this particular image that really, really wowed me here. And, um, you know, here I'm shooting in this situation, uh, you know, as similar as I could using kind of a, a more mortal setup. This is on the Fuji X-T3. Um, but it's the 56 millimeter f1.2. And so, you know, in terms of the focal length and aperture, it's not like it's terribly far off. <sighs> However, as you can see, the Otis image is just so much more special. Now, you know, this is not a cheap lens. This is about a thousand dollar lens. And obviously the Otis is in a whole nother price zone. But I mean, just look at the, the overall rendering of the the color it's the exact same scene you know shot at the exact same time but look how special the otis image looks compared to how you know frankly mundane the you know the fuji image looks even though you know this is a nice combination and then of course if we kind of zoom in and look at detail on the faces shooting at f1.4 you know versus f1.2 uh yeah it's it's kind of a night and day kind of thing here so let's look at another one of these just again this is just from the otis i mean look at how beautiful the just the whole scene becomes it has this kind of magical rendering quality fantastic detail on the subject but the you know this really reminds me the closest that i've seen to this kind of look of portrait images really comes from you know another incredibly expensive lens and that is the canon 200 millimeter f2 and uh you know and it can create images that are akin to this but I mean, you know, outside of that, you know, there aren't a lot of, of lenses that can produce something that looks quite like this. Here's another example. I'm shooting through some of those reeds and, you know, dried out things that we saw before. But you see how everything just kind of blurs together. It gives you so many creative framing options because with a lesser lens and a, you know, a smaller maximum aperture, these would just become hugely distracting, but I'm able to use them to some artistic advantage here to frame the subject in a way that's special. One final one, this is one obviously I've done some post-processing to and I've added some flare effect to, but you can see, um, you know, it, it allows you to just, you know, have tons of latitude on how you're going to frame and create and make something beautiful. So it's a gorgeous, gorgeous portrait lens. 
So I think you can see a little bit of what I'm talking about, about why this lens is so special, and even why I would say that it gives you medium format-like results. I shot with, I believe, four different uh, lenses as a part of that portrait session, and it's amazing when I'm shooting the exact same conditions with lenses side by side, how that the Otis lenses or the Otis images, I should say, I went to, you know, post-process and thought, okay, what do I want to do to this image? And I, I could hardly come up with anything to improve it. It just had a look that was really unique and fantastic right out of the box. I might have tweaked, you know, exposure a little bit here and there according to mood, but the images by themselves, it's hard to improve on them. And that is, of course, why the Otis series is so special. And, and so at the end of the day, obviously, um, you know, Otis, none of the Otis lenses are for every man. It's many people will look at a lens like this and, and just struggle to even understand who would ever buy a $5,000 prime lens that is manual focus only. It seems like an anachronism. It seems ridiculously extravagant to many people. However, if you have shot with the Otis lenses, and particularly now that we have the opportunity to shoot them on you know, good high resolution mirrorless bodies, where you can get some focus aids and uh, take advantage of higher resolution, there is something that is incredibly special about them. And uh, they deliver images that just are, are stand out. Now, whether or not that's worth it for you, that's, that's entirely your decision. Like I said, the Otis crowd is a small percentage of people, and some people will say it makes no sense. Other people will say that's gorgeous, and for my kind of work, it's worth it. I suspect you already know whether or not you are one of those people. I'm Dustin Abbott, and if you look in the description down below, um, you can find linkage to my full text review, lots more photos as a part of that. There's also linkage to an image gallery where you can check out photos for yourself, and I think that really that's where Otis images kind of speak for themselves, except for the fact that, you know, even in that image gallery, there, the resolution isn't high enough to let you appreciate just how fantastic images really are. But trust me, they are gorgeous. There's also linkage there if you would like to purchase one for yourself uh, from several retailers. There are linkage there to follow me on social media, to uh, become a patron or sign up for my newsletter. And of course, if you haven't already, please click that subscribe button right here on YouTube. Thanks for watching and have a great day.